Hello everyone. So let's get started in our end-to-end -end example. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a table named zwrap underscore UX team. So for that, for that, I will open up my Eclipse ADT tools. I'll put a link below in the description as to how to get your development environment set up and also how to get access to SAP Business Technology Platform. So once you have access to Eclipse ADT tools, uh, create a package. Uh, I'm going to call this zwrap underscore demo underscore 5551. In my case, I'm going to use a four-digit unique number for myself. Uh, you can use another four-digit number uh, in your case. And all our artifacts we will put inside this uh, demo package. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a table. Uh, so I'm going to say new other ABAP repository object. And I'm going to search for table. And I'm going to choose database table. And I'm going to give this a name. And I'm going to give this name zwrap underscore UX team uh, underscore 5551. Now if you follow the... Uh, development and environment setup for your trial instance, uh, you can use another four digit number here. Um, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, uh, say, let's say UX team demo tables, any description will suffice. Uh, let's hit next. And let's say finish. So this will give you a template for this table. Now for this table, if we look at the example that we have, uh, we want to create these fields, ID, first name, and so on. Uh, so I have a, uh, I have a, uh, a code snippet here. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all these uh, columns here, ID, first name, and so on. And I'm also going to give it a data type for those uh, columns. Um, so let me quickly explain what I have done here. Uh, so initially we only had the key client field mandatory. Uh, so this is the client field. Uh, it is uh, also marked as primary key. But in addition to that, uh, we are now having an ID field, which is also a primary key. Now the data type here is significant uh, because what we want to do is we want the system to take care of the numbering of this primary key. And when we want the system to take care of the primary key, uh, we want to use this UUID data type. Um, so now, uh, later on, we'll see how we can ask the system to generate this ID for us. Uh, we can also generate it, do it ourselves, uh, but I think it's easy to just let the system take care of uh, creating this ID. Uh, so don't use NumC for this um, data type because uh, uh, UUID, then we can let the system take care of uh, the IDs. Now, the rest of the columns are pretty straightforward. First name, I have have uh, abap.char with 100 characters, the last name, same thing, age is numc, role is char as well. Uh, and I do have two system um, fields. Uh, we won't be using this in our UI, uh, but we'll be using this for our e-tag definitions. And that is the last change that and the local last change that. So at this time, everything looks good to me. Um, I did name this ZRAP UX team underscore 5551. Um, you can name this as your table, uh, however you want. Um, okay, so at this moment, I'm going to save and activate this. And this code snippet and everything, I'll post it in GitHub uh, in GitHub. Uh, so you can always refer to this code. Uh, all you have to make sure that you have the proper uh, table name. Okay, so this activation was completed successfully. Uh, so we have uh, completed step one. Now, this would have created a table here. So if I uh, go and check, uh, there should be a table that got created, a database table that got created. But if I do open it in data preview, uh, there should be no data. And that is understandable because we just created this table. So it's a brand new table. Uh, there is no, no rows inside of it. Okay, so now the next step is we want to create an interface view. Now, an interface view reads from a base table, and it's going to read from this table that we just created. So let's go ahead and create an interface view. Again, we go to Eclipse ADT Tools. Uh, then I can right-click, and I can say New ABAP Repository Object, and I can say Data Definition this time. Uh, we want to create an interface view, and for this the naming convention is typically ZI, okay? Uh, so I standing for the interface view. And let me also give it a description, interface view for UX team. 
then I say next and next let's see we can choose a defined view so we can choose this view here and this should create us an interface uh, a view template and what we want to do in this view template uh, is we want to uh, select all the fields that we created in this table. Well, all the fields except this client. So we don't want this client. Uh, so we pretty much uh, select all the fields here. You can do pretty much a control C uh, by giving the data source name, which is the table that we just created. But what I'm going to do is I have another code snippet and uh, I'm going to copy and paste it and I'll just explain all the stuff that I have changed. Uh, so the first thing that I have changed is you have to give a unique SQL view name. So I'm going to call this ZZI. Uh, so I just add a Z uh, in addition to this table and I call it 5551. So that is that takes care of the first change. Now the view that I want to use is uh, 5551 that's the name of the view that I want to create and I want to uh, select from this table uh, this is the table that we just created 5551 um, now here we are selecting all the columns pretty much all the columns here except the client column uh, so we are just selecting all these columns and we are giving it an alias as well uh, so the first name now has a F with the capital F uh, so these are aliases uh, easy to read uh, so this uh, kind of forms the basis of uh, semantically rich data models that you've always heard about. So now we have something meaningful. Um, so this looks good here for me. Um, so basically we have created an interface view that reads directly from this base table. Uh, we do have some annotations for the last change stat and also the local last change stat. Uh, so we are identifying that as a system date time. Uh, so pretty much straightforward here. Uh, so you can use the template and create this interface view. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention is I have marked this as root and we'll revisit this later when we talk about business objects. Uh, but right now, make a note that I have marked this as a root view. Okay, so let me go ahead and save this and I'm going to activate this as well. Uh, so if we go back to the steps that we are planning to create, uh, we have done step one and also step two where we have created the interface view. So the, now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a consumption view. Now this consumption view is going to read from the interface view. So let's uh, create this consumption view. Again, we go to the Eclipse ADT. And pretty much uh, all development for RAP happens in Eclipse ADT. Uh, there is no concept of uh, SEAD and so on. Okay, so here I go in and I say other repository object and I go ahead and say uh, data definition. So I choose data definition and this time I'm going to say ZC. Uh, so again, like I said, C now stands for consumption. Uh, this is the naming convention that is uh, typically used in all SAP projects. Uh, if you're creating an interface view, then you would say I. Uh, consumption view, you would say C. Uh, now, interface view typically reads from base tables, directly from the tables. Uh, consumption view, on the other hand, it reads from interface view. And typically, they have associations. They have uh, joins with other interface views. In our case, uh, it's a very simple example. It just a single table single interface view and we are also going to read from this single interface view so consumption view any description will suffice um, so let's say next and I'm going to say define view entity this time for my um, for my template and it is going to create a template uh, again what I'm going to do uh, here is I have a code snippet uh, and I'm going to copy this code snippet here into my consumption view and let me quickly um, go through the important points uh, oops uh, so what i want to do is i want to change this to my name zz551 uh, and I'll, I'll save this um, okay so here uh, what i have done is um, we are reading from this interface view and this interface view has all these fields first name last name and so on uh, and uh, since they are aliased with the capital uh, for the first uh, letter of the word um, so we are reading from the interface view so you can clearly see we are using the interface view and you can also see here on line 7 that we are reading from this interface view 
So we add this line that we are reading from this particular interface view that we just created. And also we read pretty much all the fields. Uh, so ID, uh, first name, last name, and so on. Now you will see that I've also added some extra annotations. Um, so uh, what I have done is I've added an annotation that says search is true. Like when we create the Fiori Elements app, um, if you have seen the previous uh, uh, video, uh, you will see that there is a search button in the Fiori Elements app. Uh, so we have marked this annotation that says search searchable is true. Uh, so which means we have to at least uh, specify one or more fields where search where you can search. Uh, so I have uh, marked first name as searchable, which means you can search on the first name. I've also marked the last name as searchable, so you can also search by the last name and I've also marked the role as searchable so you can mark you can search by the role as well and I've also given some friendly uh, readable names so first name with a space here again this goes this boils down to the semantically rich data models uh, that CDS is popular for uh, so now we have these uh, semantically rich like great user experience right um, so we have uh, this uh, uh, marked as well so for each of the fields I've given some uh, end user text label as well and I'm going to save this and this all looks good to me so I'm going to activate this as well and this should get activated uh, without any issues okay so if we go back to the list of items that we have to do we have done step one step two and step three now let's create the metadata extension file now this file you want to create in order to create the Fury Elements app uh, so you can pretty much specify like in the Fury Elements app, you typically have a list report. There is a filter bar on the top and then a table that lists all the members of this UX team. Now, uh, in this uh, uh, metadata extension, what I can do is I can tell what fields need to be shown, uh, where they need to be shown, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to say other ABAP repository object. I'm going to choose metadata extension. I choose metadata extension, and I'll give the same name as ZCUX551, and I'll call this metadata for ZCUX team 551. And I hit next, and this should uh, create me a metadata extension file template. Now I have uh, some code snippet that I can copy and paste, and I'll go through these code snippets. Um, and it's fairly straightforward at this moment. Um, again, these are stuff that you would do in the predecessor model as well, in the ARPAP uh, programming model. Um, so uh, so uh, the metadata extension is nothing new with the uh, wrap. OK, so in this metadata extension, uh, what I have done is uh, I have uh, this line item uh, refers to uh, the table and the position where this first name should be shown. So first name should be shown at position 20. Now, because there is no other line item uh, that is uh, that is lower than 20, uh, this means that this uh, first name is going to be the first column in the table that is shown. Uh, and then last name is going to be the second, because uh, this is 30, and there's nothing between 20 and 30. So in the table, you will see first name, last name, age, role, uh, and salary and active. What you won't see. Um, is the ID because I didn't put the line item annotation here so you won't see that um, and you will also notice that I have a selection field now a selection field allows this call this value to be shown as a filter in the top header uh, so first name will be shown as a as a filter bar as well in the filter bar as well last name will be shown in the filter bar as well uh, age however will not be shown because I have not mentioned the selection field in in this annotation here and I've also marked last change stat and local last change stat as the UI dot hidden so it's not going to show up in the UI at all uh, so pretty much uh, this is what the metadata extension does. Uh, and I have uh, this object page, so I have uh, a facet. And you will see that once we will click on a table row, it can take you to this facet, uh, and it will have the name UX team. OK, so and this is the header information. It will say UX team. And if it's plural, it will say UX team. Uh, the variant is going to be ascending uh, by ID. So let me go ahead and save this. Now, one 
cool thing is uh, you can also put these uh, metadata extensions inside this consumption view itself. Um, now, if you do put it, then it becomes kind of uh, big and it becomes elaborate and sometimes you may not uh, be able to see what is going on. Now, if you have something that you already have and you want to extract it out, you can also actually do that. Uh, you can go source code and you can say extract metadata extension. So if you have, uh, uh, if you in your project or in some other existing project, if you have taken all this metadata extension and you have already put it in the consumption view and at a later stage you feel, you know what, it'll be nice if it is a separate file by itself, uh, you can do that by doing source code and extract metadata extension. And then you can put it in a separate file like what we are doing. Recommended approach, of course, is to put it in a separate file like this. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to activate this as well. Every, oh, wait, this needs to be 551. So we want this metadata extension for um, this view, annotate view, this view, uh, the view that we just created. So everything looks good to me. I'm going to activate it. And this should get activated. OK, so what we have done in this session is we have done step one, step two, step three, step four. I kind of went uh, pretty fast because uh, this is these are steps that you would do in the predecessor model as well. Um, now the fun begins um, where we do all these uh, other additional steps, very uh, which is uh, wrap related. Uh, but we will do this in the next session. Okay, thanks for watching.